welcome to part two of uh, my top talk on key concepts and problem solving in enzymology. So in this part two, uh, I will be going mainly for uh, enzyme kinetics and inhibition. So coming to the enzyme kinetics equation, we all know that uh, the typical uh, reaction kinetics followed by majority of enzymes is the rectangular hyperbola as the substrate saturation curve. So the equation for that rectangular hyperbola is the Michaelis-Menten equation. In order to derive the Michaelis-Menten equation, the most important concept was to uh, understand that the enzyme physically binds to the substrate to give rise to the ES complex. The central complex in the derivation of the Michaelis-Menten equation is the ES complex. The ES complex forms through interaction between the enzyme and the substrate and uh, it is a reversible uh, reaction with the forward and the reverse rate constants given as K1 and K-1. The ES complex then breaks down or it is assumed that it is the ES complex which breaks down to E plus P again uh, an, um, a reversible reaction with K2 as the forward rate constant and K-2 as the reverse rate constant. Now here it is important to understand that the ES complex is considered as the central complex but in reality there may be other enzyme bound complexes that are present in the reaction pathway. Particularly one can easily imagine that there has to be an EP complex just like there is an ES complex because the conversion of substrate to product takes place on the surface of the enzyme. So there has to be other, there have to be other complexes in this scheme. However, they, it, they are all considered as the ES complex in the derivation of the Michaelis-Menten equation. So the Michaelis-Menten equation uh, and its derivation required several simplifying assumptions that needed to be made. The first and the foremost assumption that was made was to eliminate this rate constant K minus 2 considering that when you carry out in vitro experiments, we add the substrate and the enzyme in an artificial condition and there is no product uh, added at least and it eventually builds up but we carry out the reaction measurements before significant concentration of the product builds up. So therefore, K minus 2 can be neglected and that is one of the simplifying assumptions of the for the deriving the Michaelis-Menten equation. There are a number of other assumptions and there are basically two major ways in which the Michaelis-Menten equation is derived. One is using the original Michaelis-Menten assumptions. They are called as the equilibrium assumptions because they assume that the ES complex is in equilibrium with free E and free S. And the other assumptions are the Briggs-Haldane assumptions where the ES complex is considered to be significantly broken down to E plus P and not necessarily in equilibrium with E plus S. Whichever way we derive the equation, the ultimate equation comes out to be the same and that equation is the equation for the rectangular hyperbola which is V equals V max into S over Km plus S. So V0 is the initial reaction velocity. The importance of initial velocity is understood because if we do not measure the initial reaction velocity, the product buildup is significant and the assumption that K minus 2 is negligible does not remain valid. Vmax is the maximal velocity and S in square brackets is the molar substrate concentration. When we derive the Michaelis-Menten equation using Briggs-Haldane assumption, Km turns out to be made up of three rate constants, 
k minus 1 plus k plus 2 over k minus 1, uh, sorry, k plus 1. So, this is the definition of km in terms of the rate constants. When the same equation is derived using michaelis menten um, assumptions, km turns out to be k minus 1 over k plus 1 and this rate constant k2 is ignored in the definition of km. Other than that, the equation remains the same. So, this equation basically explains the substrate saturation curve, which is also known as the michaelis menten plot or the michaelis menten curve. Now, we take a little close look at this plot and try to understand what exactly does this mean and how does this equation explain the plot. So, the plot first of all has initial velocity or V naught as it is written here on the y axis and the molar substrate concentration on the x axis. A michaelis menten type of enzyme always shows a rectangular hyperbola as the substrate saturation curve where initially the velocity is linearly increasing with substrate concentration, gradually it tapers down and finally it actually reaches a plateau. Now, if we recollect the reaction order that I had mentioned in the part 1, we can realize that at the initial phase of the substrate saturation curve, it is a first order type of a reaction and at the later part it becomes zero order that means it becomes independent of the substrate concentration even if we increase the substrate concentration it brings about no effect on the velocity and it is here in between in between in this part of the graph that the reaction is of some mixed order and it is the full equation that is obeyed. Now, if we look, go back to the michaelis menten equation, this is the equation and we approximate it at very high substrate concentration and very low substrate concentrations. At very low substrate concentrations, we can ignore the concentration of substrate in the denominator and the equation becomes V0 equals V max upon Km into S. So, here this part goes like a straight line V0 equals V max by Km into S. So, this is a first order reaction kinetics which is seen at very low substrate concentrations. Now, if in the same way we approximate it to the high substrate concentrations when substrate is very much high as compared to Km, we can in fact ignore Km in the denominator and the reaction equation becomes V0 equals V max into S over S or in other words V0 equals V max which is what we derive therefore as the simplified equation at high substrate concentration and this explains how there is a zero order kinetics at high substrate concentrations and it is here in between that the full equation is obeyed. So, therefore, we can say that this michaelis menten equation can be simplified at low substrate concentrations as a first order equation and zero order equation at high substrate concentrations. Now, another important aspect about this equation is that when the velocity is 50 percent of V max, we can derive easily from this equation that substrate concentration equals Km. So, that is a practical definition of Km as the substrate concentration which gives rise to 50 percent of the velocity. Now, in this equation we see here it explains how velocity varies with substrate concentration and we can see that velocity varies with substrate concentration 
using two constants this hyperbola rectangular hyperbola can be modeled the two constants we know are km and vmax so the definition of km as a practical definition is that it is the substrate concentration at which velocity is 50% of the vmax now the definition of vmax on the other hand vmax is nothing but k cat into et what is k cat k cat is the same as k2 or the forward rate constant for the breakdown of es to e plus b so this table gives a clear more clear idea about the constants that are present in the michaelis menten equation so the two constants that are apparently seen in the equation are km and vmax what do they stand for so km is the equilibrium constant for the binding or the reaction where es bind to give rise to the es complex km can be a true equilibrium constant which is called ks that is nothing but k minus k plus 1 over minus 1 or a pseudo equilibrium constant which is k plus 1 plus k2 over k minus 1 so km actually gives us a measure of the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate and we have seen that the practical definition is what we obtained from the graph as the substrate concentration that gives 50% vmax the units of km are the same as for substrate concentration in molar or moles per liter on the other hand if we take a look at vmax is vmax really a constant so the answer is that vmax is a constant only if one maintains the enzyme concentration constant in fact it is not a constant it is dependent on total enzyme concentration so if we take different aliquots of the enzyme or different preparations of the enzyme they are bound to give rise to different vmax values and therefore the true value of vmax is nothing but k cat into et it is practically determined as the velocity at excess of substrate concentration the units of vmax are micromoles of product formed per minute so we see here that in the vmax equation is hidden the true constant the second constant which defines a michaelis menten type of enzyme and that is k cat so k cat is the rate constant for breakdown of es to e plus p it is a first order rate constant it is also called as k2 and practically k cat is nothing but the turnover number so we see from here that k cat is v max divided by et so if we know the velocity maximal velocity of a particular concentration of enzyme we can determine the turnover number the units of k cat are usually inverse time or uh, they are all inverse time but usually per second or per minute both km vmax as well as k cat they are all conditional constants they are not like the absolute constants that we know of in physics they are dependent on temperature ph and various other conditions of the assay this table gives the range of km and turnover numbers for different enzymes for each enzyme if there are more than one substrate each substrate may have a different km value so here we have the km ranging from 5000 micromolar to 6 micromolar four different enzymes so km depends upon the active site geometry and how much complementarity and binding is possible with the given active site for the different enzymes the same enzyme catalyzing the same reaction from different sources may show different km values the turnover number here we can see 
again can vary from less than 1 per second to about million per second. So highly efficient enzymes have very high turnover numbers. So turnover number is nothing but kcat as I told you. And there is a third constant or a parameter that can be derived using both kcat and km called kcat by km. So this kcat by km sometimes is very useful because it is also known as the specificity factor or the specificity constant. So if an enzyme has multiple substrates, how do we know which is the best substrate for that enzyme? The best way is to look at the values of kcat by km and whichever gives the highest kcat by km is the most suitable substrate for that enzyme. The michaelis menten equation, the normal michaelis menten equation is that of a rectangular hyperbola. So when we actually practically carry out the experiment, the idea is to determine Km and Vmax practically for a particular enzyme. Using directly this equation and the plot has certain problems. First of all, it is very difficult to really extrapolate from few data points. We need to cover the whole range of substrate concentrations to get accurate values of Km and Vmax. The other problem is that first Vmax has to be accurately determined and Km is dependent on the accurate determination of Vmax because we have the definition of Km as that which gives 50 percent Vmax. So this uh, plot is practically not very popular and there are several linear versions of the michaelis menten equation that are now in use and these linear versions convert the very same michaelis menten equation into a form which is like that of a linear straight line which is y is equal to mx plus c. The most popular linear form of the michaelis menten equation is what is known as the line weaver buck plot. Line weaver buck plot is also called the double reciprocal plot. And the equation for the line weaver buck plot is obtained by simply inverting the michaelis menten equation and rearranging it into a form which will give us a straight line equation. So we see here that if we plot 1 by v as the y parameter and 1 by s as the x parameter, we will get a straight line whose slope is km by v max and whose y intercept is going to be 1 by v max. So how does the plot actually look? So we see here that this is the plot, the double reciprocal plot because it plots velocity as a reciprocal and substrate concentration as a reciprocal. This is a straight line and as we have seen the slope of this straight line is km by v max and the y intercept here the point at which it intersects the y axis is 1 by v max. Another interesting aspect about this plot is if this plot is extrapolated into the negative y axis the line can intersect on the negative x axis and it is very easy to uh, understand that this x intercept is nothing but minus 1 by km which can be obtained by putting y equal to 0 in this plot. So this x intercept is a very important aspect because that gives you the value of km. So when the michaelis menten or the enzyme kinetic data is plotted in the form of a double reciprocal plot, what is it that one actually wants to find out from this double reciprocal plot is the value of this point which is the intersection on the y axis and the value on this point which is the intersection on the x axis because they will give us the numerical value of Vmax.
as well as KM. Besides the line weaver work plot, there are a number of other plots which I would recommend uh, one should actually look into each of these plots. They are interesting linear versions of the michaelis menten equation. Now coming to some uh, simple questions regarding the michaelis menten equation. We see here a question where the michaelis menten constant Km is numerically equal to Vmax, dependent on enzyme concentration, independent of pH, numerically equal to Vmax by 2. Now if we see each of these options, it is very clear that none of them are actually correct because Km is not numerically equal to Vmax and neither is it numerically equal to Vmax by 2. Km is very much dependent on pH and Km is independent of enzyme concentration. So it is Vmax which is dependent on enzyme concentration not Km. So we see here that the answer is none is correct. This question when substrate concentration is increased for a simple enzymatic reaction, the reaction order progresses from first order to zero order with respect to substrate concentration because the enzyme product complexes prevent further binding of more substrate, significant product formation results in inhibition of the reaction. All of the active sites are saturated with substrate at high substrate concentrations and substrate substrate interactions become strong. So I think uh, by scrutinizing these answers, it is very clear that the correct answer is C that all the active sites are saturated with substrate at high substrate concentrations. But the answer A is pretty close in that the enzyme product complexes it can be confusing in rather that the enzyme product complexes prevent further binding of more substrate. So the enzyme product complexes are not really preventing further binding of more substrate because even at the point of saturation product formation always takes place. The enzyme reaction goes on but there is no further increase in the velocity with increase in the substrate concentration. This question asks which of the following equation represents the reciprocal of michaelis menten equation. So we see here this is again a recap of what the michaelis menten equation is and when we invert it or when we carry out its reciprocal, first of all we should get 1 by V on the left hand side of the equation which is not apparent in any of the options except for this. So if we scrutinize this little further, we see that it is an exact reciprocal of the michaelis menten equation and there is no doubt the answer is A. There are a number of problems which can be asked on the michaelis menten equation in which the numerical values of various parameters are given and one parameter may be needed to be calculated. So this is one example. For example, what is the substrate concentration for the enzyme catalyzed reaction which has an initial velocity of so and so and the maximum velocity of 21.85 moles per liter per minute and michaelis menten constant of so and so. So we just take all the values that are given. We are given initial velocity, we are given Vmax and we are given Km. It is very important to note down the units of the values that are given because sometimes if the units are not same, they may need to be converted to the same unit. Say for example, we may have something in micromoles and this may be in moles per liter, so we need to convert them to the same unit. So here in this case these three parameters are given the michaelis menten equation has actually only four parameters. So we have to find out the concentration of substrate 
that is required for this particular initial velocity. So, it is a case of simple mathematical substitution of the values. So, we substitute the value of V naught, V max, Km and do the typical calculations that are required right? and we get uh, the answer um, here which is behind actually. Uh, so, the answer is here. So, the calculations go on further that substrate is equal to 3.88 over 0.73 which is 5.315 mole per liter that is the unit for the substrate. So, the best answer here which matches these calculations is 5.30 moles per liter. So, this is a case of simple substitution of all the values and finding out the unknown parameter. There are many versions of this type of uh, questions that can be asked or that are asked usually in various exams or entrances. This is another interesting aspect or points out an interesting aspect about the michaelis menten equation. So, in a chemical reaction catalyzed by the enzyme following michaelis menten equation, what will be the concentration of the substrate when the velocity of the reaction is 90 percent of the maximal velocity. So, here we are not given all the values, but we are only told that the reaction is proceeding at 90 percent of V max. So, what is the concentration of the substrate and we see here in the answers or options that are given the concentration of substrate is given relative to Km. Is it 18 times the value of Km, 9 times the value of Km, 5 times the value of Km or 1 time the value of Km? We immediately can rule out the option D that substrate is equal to Km or 1 times Km we can say only when velocity is 50 percent of the V max. That is the definition of Km. Km is the substrate concentration at 50 percent of maximal velocity. So, this option D is uh, absolutely it can be ruled out and we now have to work out which of these three options is correct. So, in order to do that we again go back to the michaelis menten equation and uh, in order to give a general idea, I would like you to see this kind of derivation that V equals V max divided by N. In this case, N could be any value and it tells us that velocity is a fraction of V max. It could be a tenth fraction, it could be a ninetieth nine fraction. So, it is a fraction of V max, a fraction by n. And when we substitute this value V max by n out here as v, v, and it will be very quickly one can cancel out the V max value here and rearrange this equation somewhat, and we come to the conclusion that substrate concentration is always going to be. Km divided by n minus 1. No matter what the value of n is, substrate will be Km divided by n minus 1. So, using that, it can be shown that when V max, when velocity is V max by 2, that is 50 percent V max, S, that is substrate concentration, is equal to Km divided by 2 minus 1 which is nothing but S equals to Km. Now, this S value is the substrate concentration when velocity is half of the V max. So, this substrate concentration is denoted uh, by uh, subscript as S 0.5. 
So, S.5 is conventionally means that it is the substrate concentration which gives half of the Vmax or 0.5 fraction of a Vmax or 50 percent of Vmax. In the same way, we can quickly realize that when Vmax, when velocity is Vmax by 4, that is it is 25 percent of Vmax. We have the value of S.25. S.25 using this equation immediately one should be able to tell that S.25 is Km divided by 3. Same way S.1, S.1 means it is tenth of the Vmax, one tenth of the Vmax value. So, one tenth of the Vmax value is reached when substrate concentration is Km by 9. And when 90 percent of Vmax is to be obtained, the substrate concentration S.9 is 9 times Km. So, we go back to the question that was asked and we see that the, the options that we have are 18 times Km, 9 times Km, 5 times Km. And the correct option is going to be 9 times Km because the velocity is 90 percent of the maximal velocity. So, when 90 percent of maximal velocity is attained, the substrate concentration is 9 times of Km. Another interesting aspect of the michaelis menten equation is to understand the ratio of S.9 is to S.1. The ratio of S.9 is to S.1. This ratio is very important because this ratio tells us how much substrate concentration should be increased to go from 10 percent of Vmax to 90 percent of Vmax. So, we have S.9 divided by S.1 which is nothing but 9 times Km divided by Km by 9. 9 times Km divided by Km by 9 which turns out to be the magic figure of 81. This figure of 81 is true for any michaelis menten type of enzyme. No matter what its Vmax is, what its Km is, it will always require 81 times increase in substrate concentration to go from 10 percent of maximal velocity to 90 percent of maximal velocity. So, this uh, value of 81 is particularly very important when we tries to understand allosteric behavior of enzymes. For allosteric enzymes, this value goes down from 81 to much lower value indicating that a small change in substrate concentration can bring about large change in the velocity of the reaction for allosteric enzymes. But for michaelis menten enzyme, it is always 81. So, the answer for this of course, is 9 times Km. Another question asks which of the following assumptions are used in Briggs Haldane derivation of Michaelis Menten equation? Now, Briggs Haldane derivation of Michaelis Menten equation is also called as the steady state assumption, and in that it is assumed that the ES complex is maintained at a steady state during the initial velocity period because its breakdown back to E plus S and back to E plus P are the same as its rate of formation. So, the option A is concentration of E S complex rapidly reaches a steady state. This is most likely to be true, but let us still see whether the other options are correct or not the substrate concentration is greater than the enzyme concentration. This is also an assumption actually for deriving the michaelis menten equation, but this is not a specific assumption for the briggs haldane derivation. It is true for michaelis menten assumption as well. At saturating concentration of substrate, nearly all of the enzyme is found in the ES complex. That is also true but it is not the assumption unique for that briggs haldane but it is used for both michaelis menten as well as for briggs haldane so since the question does not ask which is the assumption which is specifically used in briggs haldane derivation 
In fact, all of the above were used in deriving the Michaelis Menten equation. These two options B and C were used for both Michaelis Menten assumptions as well as Briggs Haldane assumption, whereas option A is specifically used in Briggs Haldane derivation of the Michaelis Menten equation. In this question, it is asked in an enzyme catalyzed reaction, an enzyme obeys Michael, simple Michaelis Menten kinetics. Which of the following plots describe the Michaelis Menten kinetics? So, of course, the plot of V versus S with a rectangular hyperbola is the canonical description of Michaelis Menten kinetics. But if you look at the other plots, P versus time, this is not a saturation, substrate saturation plot, but this too holds true for Michaelis Menten kinetics that the product with time is going to be uh, tapering down. Similarly, here we see substrate versus time and substrate concentration has to go down with time if even in a case of a Michaelis Menten or any type of enzyme substrate concentration goes down with time but we see here that this is the manner in which the substrate concentration goes down with time and we see a fourth plot of velocity versus ET that velocity is linearly proportional to the enzyme concentration. So, although this is the canonical plot which describes the Michaelis Menten kinetics or for whom the Michaelis Menten equation has been derived, but the other plots do also show the typical kind of reaction one would expect for a Michaelis Menten equation. Therefore, the correct answer would be P, Q, R, and S. Now, coming to another aspect of enzyme kinetics and that is the kinetics of inhibition. Enzyme inhibitors are broadly classified into two types, reversible and irreversible. Irreversible inhibition follows different of course kinetics as compared to reversible kinetics. Irreversible inhibition is a matter of uh, follows the time uh, kind of interaction where it uh, progresses with time whereas reversible inhibition varies with inhibitor concentrations and reaches equilibrium. So the kind of reversible inhibitors, there are three types of reversible inhibitions which can be easily discerned. There are more types but three types of complete inhibition we can say uh, is possible with reversible inhibitors. So, reversible inhibitors can bind to the enzyme and of course, the EI complex is formed and the EI complex can dissociate back into free E plus I. The equilibrium constant that governs the binding of the inhibitor to the enzyme, just like the constant for binding of substrate to the enzyme is Km, we have the inhibitor binding constant as Ki. Now in the three types of uh, inhibition patterns, there are some things which are very important to remember. So we have competitive, non-competitive and uncompetitive. The inhibitor is actually added in the presence of the substrate. So the question is that how do the substrate and the inhibitor behave with respect to binding of the to the enzyme. So a competitive inhibitor binds only to free enzyme. If the substrate is bound, a competitive inhibitor cannot bind. So the reason for this is because they share the same binding site. They resemble each other. A competitive inhibitor is a mimic of the substrate and it is a substrate analog and it will be able to bind 
to the free enzyme at the very same site where the substrate binds and exclude the substrate or prevent it from binding. On the other hand, a non-competitive inhibitor is independent of the substrate as far as binding is concerned. That means it binds to both free enzyme and the ES complex. So it means that the non-competitive inhibitor has a distinct binding site present on the enzyme and when it binds to the enzyme at its own site, it prevents so the substrate from getting converted to product efficiently. So a non-competitive inhibitor essentially binds to both free and the bound form equally well. An uncompetitive inhibitor on the other hand is a different kind of an inhibitor which binds only when the substrate is already bound to the enzyme. So it means that the binding site for an uncompetitive inhibitor is unavailable in the free enzyme but when the substrate binds this site is available and we get the ESI complex. So in other words when there are three entities which can bind to each other, the enzyme, substrate and inhibitor. The question is whether a ternary complex forms or not. In a competitive inhibitor, there is no ternary complex. There is only either EI or ES. In a non-competitive inhibitor, there is ternary complex EIS. There are also binary complexes EI and ES. On the other hand, in an uncompetitive inhibitor, only a ternary complex is there, EIS. There is no binary complex of EI. What are the effects of these inhibitors on the kinetics of the enzyme reaction? A competitive inhibitor increases the Km. A non-competitive inhibitor decreases the Vmax and an uncompetitive inhibitor decreases Km and Vmax to the equal extent and uh, therefore acts as an inhibitor. Now, if you see, uh, just uh, look at these effects that the inhibitor produces on the enzyme, intuitively you can tell that an increase in Km means the apparent affinity of the substrate is decreased therefore the reaction is inhibited or it goes on less efficiently. Here there is a decrease in Vmax and Vmax we know is related to Kcat so in reality the Kcat is decreased or the turnover of the enzyme is reduced and therefore the overall there is an inhibition. An uncompetitive inhibitor actually does something little bit contradictory because it decreases the Km, that means it apparently brings an increase in affinity, but it lowers the Kcat and therefore overall it acts as an inhibitor. The most important way to discriminate between these three types of inhibitors is to look at the line weaver burke plot in comparison with the uninhibited reaction. So if we have two, two lines, one is the line which represents the uninhibited reaction and a line which inhibits, uh, which represents the inhibited reaction. If these two lines intersect on the y-axis of the double reciprocal plot, then it is indicative of competitive inhibition. If the two lines intersect on the x-axis of the double reciprocal plot, it is indicative of non-competitive inhibition. And if the two lines appear parallel to each other and they do not intersect at all, they are uncompetitive type of inhibition. So with these concepts, if one remembers some of these concepts, it's very easy to understand the nature of an inhibitor without really remembering the inhibition equation. For each uh, inhib type of inhibitor, one has, one can derive the uh, inhibition equation and of course uh, that will help in understanding it better. So we have a 
question here. The graph shows a line weaver Burke plot for an enzyme catalyzed reaction. Which of the following statement is correct? Now this graph if we see it is a simple double reciprocal plot and there is only one line actually present on it and uh, this line has an in y intercept close to 1 and an x intercept at minus 0.5. Now I have already told you that this is 1 by V max and this is 1 by Km. So all, obviously V max is 1 and Km is 2 according to this graph. So which of the following statements is correct? Vmax is 5 and with competitive inhibition Vmax remains unchanged. Vmax is 5 doesn't appear correct. Km is 2 and with competitive inhibition both Km and Vmax decrease. Km is 2 appears right but competitive inhibition does not affect Km and Vmax, it affects only Km. Km is 0.5 and with competitive inhibition Vmax increase but Km unchanged. So this is also a very absurd statement because no inhibitor increases the Vmax. The last option is Km is 2 which is alright and with competitive inhibition Km increases which is also alright but Vmax remains unchanged so this is also perfectly fine. So uh, the option seems to be D seems to be the most correct one and all others are not accurate. Which of the following are true about competitive inhibitors? They are usually small molecules which is true actually. They are usually water soluble which is also true. They are usually resembling transition state intermediates. They actually resemble substrate but some of them could resemble transition state intermediate. They usually resemble substrate but suppose the enzyme has two substrates. A bisubstrate analog could be actually more like a transition state intermediate and it could act as a competitive inhibitor. Their inhibition can be reversed if concentration of substrate is increased. This is a key feature of competitive inhibition that when competitive inhibition uh, occurs, if one provides excess of substrate, I already told you that either substrate binds or the inhibitor binds. So if excess of substrate is provided it precludes the inhibitor from binding and the inhibition can be reversed. That is the characteristic hallmark of competitive inhibition. So option number S is uh, absolutely necessary to be there in the answer and we see that option S is there only in these two answers and uh, the best answer I would say could be P, Q, R and S because most of these options are correct for competitive inhibitor. The kinetics of an enzyme in the presence or absence of a reversible inhibitor are described in the following graph. So we see here again this is a double reciprocal plot and two lines appear on it. We see the one which is minus inhibitor and plus inhibitor and the two lines intersect on the y-axis. The very fact that the lines intersect on the y-axis indicate that it is a competitive inhibitor. Now what is the question actually asked? It says that if concentration of the reversible inhibitor in the plus i in experiment was equal to 3 into something molar then the dissociation constant for the enzyme inhibitor complex is. Now how does one derive that using only what is given is the concentration of the inhibitor. We do not know any other parameter 
other than what is depicted graphically. So what is important here is to look at this x negative x intercept and this negative x intercept is the km gives us the km reciprocal of km in fact in the absence in the absence and in the presence of the inhibitor so if we just look at it this is in the absence of the inhibitor the value is minus 4 so km is 1 by 4 and in the presence of the inhibitor it has become 1 by 2 now we have these two km values. The value of km in the absence of the inhibitor is the true km and the value of km in the presence of the inhibitor is what is known as the km apparent or apparent increased km in the presence of the inhibitor. Now if one looks uh, at the equation that relates km apparent with the original km of the enzyme we know that Km apparent is the original Km multiplied by a factor of 1 plus I by Ki. So using this equation, we know the value of Km, the original Km from the graph here, which is 1 by 4. We know the value of I, which is given in the question. And we know the value of Km apparent again from the graph, which is 1 by 2. So all that remains in this equation is the value ki which has to be found out by substituting all these different parameters as obtained from the data. So many a time the graphical data can be should be used to get the numerical value of the concerned parameter. In this case the numerical value of km is very important which can be obtained from this graph. An example of comparative inhibition in case of an enzyme is the inhibition of succinate dehydrogenase by malonate, cytochrome oxidase by cyanide, hexokinase by glucose 6-phosphate, carbonic anhydrase by carbon dioxide. So here we can easily rule out some of the options that carbonic anhydrase by carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide is like a substrate or could be a product depends on how you look at it for the carbonic anhydrase reaction. Glucose 6-phosphate is also a product of the hexokinase and cyanide is unrelated to the substrate therefore it cannot be considered. So the only option we have is the succinate, succinic dehydrogenase by malonate and succinate and malonate if one tries to remember the structures they are similar. There's some couple of more questions at the end. The effect of competitive inhibitor on the kinetics of an enzyme reaction include which of the following? Competitive inhibitor, the option is Vmax is not changed, which is correct. Increased concentration of substrate reverse the inhibition, that is also correct. Km is increased is also correct. And the inhibitor binds to the site on the enzyme other than the catalytic site. This last part does not really seem to be correct. So the option that turns out to be is P, Q and R. Drinking methanol can be fatal because the host alcohol dehydrogenase converts it into formaldehyde. One way to detoxify metal methanol poisoning is, this one should know that methanol poisoning can be reversed by drinking ethanol and that is what is uh, the basis of uh, the detoxification of methanol because of competitive inhibition. Uh, thank you.